Hey Luke here with catsandcarp.com and we're fishing for big catfish and stripers from the bank. We're going to show you how to catch catfish on big water, whether it's a big reservoir or a big river. If you just have a hard time getting out to where the fish are, this is the video for you. And this is a, it has a hotel, a building! Yeah, that's right. Tommy's here and my buddy Dave's here and uh, we're going to have a good time. All right, we got 20 ounces of lead, 10 aught circle hooks, half a shad. Hopefully that's enough to get it done. I need 20 ounces of lead for three reasons. First, there's a lot of current. Second, there's a lot of weeds in the water. And third, I'm fishing at long distances. The further you fish, the more lead it takes to pin your gear down to the bottom. I'm fishing several hundred yards from shore, so I need a kayak to get that lead out to where I want to fish. And this is a great way to fish at long distances in big rivers and big He'll lakes. Right back, huh? This kayak's only $200. It's miserable to fish from, but it works great for kayaking baits out because it's light, it's cheap, it's durable. So let me show you why I'm fishing so far from shore. I'm fishing up against this bridge. You can see the arches. Okay, the current's coming in, so the current's coming through these arches really fast. But right in between the arches, uh, where the bridge enters the water, those are calm, sheltered spots. Those calm spots are where the fish hang out when the tide's running really aggressively, like it was then. So that's where I want to be, and that's way too far to cast. Additionally, I want to get out that far because I want to get away from the drop-off. This location, it goes from about 6 to 10 feet down to 30 feet, and if you fish close to the drop-off, your line chafes on the edge, snags, and breaks. So if you get out further away from the drop-off, you can avoid clipping that ledge. If you're going to do this method in a river, it's really good to have a team because as soon as you drop the baits, you need somebody to flip the bale. If you don't flip the bale immediately, that current will drag out all your line and spool you and it gets into a big mess. Close it! Is that a striper? That's a striper. Yeah, nice. That's a nice one. Here, here, don't, don't, yeah, let's get the net. How's that? That's your first striper, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That's not a bad way to start. That's a nice fish. That's a nice striper. Yeah. I have no clue whether that's a legal one or not, but. Uh, it's gotta be like 20 or something. Yeah, you just catch and release it anyways? Yeah, I wouldn't need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Around here, it's a little dodgy. All right, but they're a little bit more of a fragile fish than a catfish. I know that much. So let's get them unhooked and out of here quick, pretty quick. Can you take my picture now with, with my camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure, man. Okay, smile for the camera real quick. <laughs> that was actually a pretty good smile. For... But there's usually a school of them. So, oh, uh, I am not. All right, let's throw them back. Not bad. As the sun set, the tide started to calm down a little bit, so I could start fishing a little bit closer. So here's another method. I still need to fish with a lot of lead because of all the weeds and current. Much more lead than I can cast reasonably, so I use a throwing stick. It's basically a spoon on the end of a six-foot pole, and I put my lead and baits in there, and whink! I wing that out there, and it allows me to throw as much lead as I want. So I'm throwing 10 to 20 ounces of lead with a rod that's really designed for three ounces. Just make sure to open the bale before you do it. <laughs> um, a good 12 foot uh, surf casting rod or a carp fishing pole is really good for getting long distances. This thing will throw um, five ounces of lead 100 yards without much fuss. Carp fishing poles and surf rods are a great option if you're not having to throw tons of lead. Now in case you're wondering why I'm worrying so much about the lead, Having enough lead is important to not getting snagged up. If your rig gets dragged across the bottom by the current, you will get snagged up. So if you're getting snagged a lot, it's probably because your gear's moving. Get your gear pinned down to the bottom and you'll reduce your snags a lot. Snags are a huge issue when you're fishing at long distances. The more line you have in the water, the better the chances are that you're gonna get snagged on something. So this is one of my rods I had out about two, 300 yards. Um, and I've got a fish on there. I get him up over the ledge, um, pumping him, it's going pretty good. And he got snagged up about 30, 40 feet from the shore. So I get in my kayak 
to try to free him up. Now, what you can do with this, if you, if you don't know already, the reason why getting in the kayak helps is that it allows you to pull the fish from a different direction, to pull it back the way it came. And so being able to get in the kayak allows you to really pull out the fish from different angles and really increase your chances of getting them out of the snag. How much seaweed and debris is in the water is a big deal because you have hundreds of yards of line out in there. And so that line just collects weeds and collects weeds and uh, it, it becomes a real problem. One of the advantages of braid line is that it cuts through the weeds a little bit better. It's got a thinner uh, profile. It's kind of abrasive, so it gets, gets through those weeds. But the downside is that it's not as uh, abrasion resistant as mono is. And so if you're dealing with snags, it's nice to have mono. If you're dealing with weeds, it's nice to have braid. But either way, um, despite all the uh, weeds, tons and tons of weeds in the current and the distances, we still managed uh, uh, some stripers and a nice, uh, a nice uh, catfish. So oh, it, uh, it's a lot more work, but you really can get out at good distances with these techniques. Okay. okay, there we go. Look at the camera, Tim. Tommy. You good or? Yeah, we're good. I feel the fish needs to get back. Okay, you want to throw him back? Okay, here we go. Whoa! All right, we'll try to figure out these lines. Now. Oh, he's spying me between my fingers. Oh, it was worth going out for. This was a lot of fun and a lot of work, but you can see. There's a lot of tricks to getting your rigs a little bit further out there when you're fishing big waters like this. So even if you're just stuck on the bank, that doesn't mean you can't get out there and reach the fish you need to reach. But you gotta be really, you pay a lot of attention to current, to flotsam and seaweed in the water, to snags. A lot of those things make a lot more of a difference when you're fishing at long distances. But anyway, hopefully you liked the video. And uh, if you liked this video, Check out some of these other great videos from catsandcarp.com. Check out these videos about bank fishing, including uh, fishing for catfish with my little portable uh, rod holder and cooler, and fishing from the bank at night for some great blue catfish and channel catfish with Tommy. Had a great little camping trip. If you want to see these videos, I'm going to put links in the description. And don't forget to click subscribe for new videos every week.